I wanted to actually start on the asset management side. Sure. So you have the Calia. How worried are you about volatility, rising interest rates? I mean, we talk about this day in, day out. Is it going to be easier to manage money as interest rates go up, or are you worried about too much volatility? I think it's never easy to manage money. <laughs> Fair. Uh, <laughs> and this is not a particularly easy uh, time, but uh, we are, generally speaking, quite constructive. We think that uh, this is a moment where there is synchronized global growth um, in the economies. We think that, by and large, the corporate sector is doing very well. Corporate earnings are growing and strong. We think that balance sheet have been restored in the financial sector, but also in the industrial sector over the last few years. So we think, by and large, the fundamentals are, are good. Now, we have experienced growing volatility over the last few weeks, um, certainly. But this comes from a period, a very long period of very low volatility, which was probably abnormal. So we are not used to volatility any anymore. I think we should get used to it a, a bit more. Uh, but I'm not too surprised about it. I mean, we talk on this program especially about passive versus active management and the fact that actually if it goes to passive then it's much more difficult to ask for fees. Do you feel more comfortable about fees in the future for asset managers and wealth managers or are you concerned that actually you're, you're going after the, the big banks and so you're in a position of weakness? I think you know there, there is margin pressure um, in this business. There's been for uh, a long time. There is in every asset class, there is in private equity, there is in public markets, there is in... Hedge everything. funds everywhere, yeah. Um, on the other hand, the business is growing. Uh, the asset pool, uh, the financial asset pool is growing. Um, and I think at the end of the day, investors will be ready to pay for service, for value, for performance. And the question is, you know, do you provide that or not? Clearly, if you don't provide that, uh, you're going to have a problem. Um, we, you know, we are a niche operator. Um, we try to focus on niche strategies. We try to provide a tailor-made service to clients, and we think that there is, you know, big room to do that because banks have become increasingly complex and complicated beasts uh, to manage, and uh, this is not always easy for customers to interact with. H how much bigger do you want Decalia to become? Well, you know, we we don't really have a set target in terms of size. Um, for us, what is important is is quality. You know, we run our money, our the partners of the firm run our money alongside our clients, and so for us, the most important thing is risk-adjusted, um, you know, result on on our assets and their assets. And uh, you know, we are beyond the point where. Um, we're not a startup anymore in terms of P&L, and we have the comfort and the resources to invest and to grow the business. And so we are pretty, you know, serene about, about size. We, we don't need to do it quickly. We want to do it well. Um, Rodolfo Benete, talk to me about, so if you look at the cheer group, there are, there are three main units, right? Healthcare, automotives, and press. What's doing better? What do you expect to actually? I can tell you what's outperform. doing worst. <laughs> <laughs> tell me what's doing worst. Don't say media, though. That would break my heart. <laughs> but you knew the you knew the answer. Uh, well, you know, I think media is is challenging. It has been challenging for the last at least ten years. Um, I think it will continue to stay challenging. I think you know, companies in this sector are struggling to adapt to a new market, which has been totally changed and driven by technology and consumer habits. Uh, and I don't think this is, you know, stopping. Actually, this is even accelerating in terms of, you know, the pace of change. So I think it's a big challenge for every company in this business. On the other hand, what is comforting is that the value and the demand for quality information and content, as you well know, is increasing because in a increasingly complicated word, people want to have more information, they want to have more updated information, want to have more quality information. So if you can provide that, and if you can put together, you know, the right business model to get paid for that, um, it's not necessarily a bad business to be in. But, you know, short, short term, I think the dynamics are challenging. But does that mean that that, that unit will change significantly? And again, do, do, do you have to put things online? Is it, if you, if you see it, the changing landscape for media, then you, you could argue that actually if you radically change, then that's how you make money. I think we are forced to radically change. I don't think we have the choice. Um, and, you know, we're doing it ourselves. Um, I think, you know, the challenge is the transition, is how much you lose on your legacy, traditional, analog business, and how fast can you grow the digital part of the business, knowing that 
you compete against um, you know, very strong competitors. If you think of you know, the Google and the Facebooks of this world, which are today our competitors in the advertising space, right. um, those are formidable competitors and they have, because of their business model, a, a, an inherent competitive advantage in profiling their customers and, and, and selling advertising to them. But will those same companies then be maybe your, um, you know, the people that you sell your automotive uh, parts to, if you look at driverless cars? Who are you, who are you talking with to, to see this future transportation business? Well, I think, you know, this, this is uh, one of our businesses is, is supplying auto components to uh, cars and trucks globally. And, uh, um, I think, you know, the changes that are happening in the transportation business are unprecedented. I think, you know, over the last five years and probably over the next 10 or 15 years, uh, this business will be totally different um, because of, you know, engines, because of connected cars, because of self-driving cars. Um, and, and so, it's, it's a big opportunity. It's a great opportunity for suppliers as well as for uh, car makers and truck makers. And uh, I think our company is uh, fairly well positioned in this business. We work with every major uh, car and truck manufacturer globally. Uh, we have a global footprint. Um, and I think it's, uh, you know, I think we have the chance to secure a growing added value uh, in a business where uh, the OEMs are basically shifting the added value to the suppliers. And so our business, uh, you know, given the same size of the auto production, but our business is growing because we're getting a higher slice of the added value every year. And, and this is a great opportunity. Um, Rodolfo, I also need to talk to you about the Italian election. So we're about 10 days away from that. Do you worry that they may be disruptive? and for, for a, an Italian CEO? And is that probably the question that you get asked the most when you're traveling to London meeting with investors? Yeah, uh, well, you know, I, I, there, there's, there's a contradiction that I have a hard time reconciling. On the one hand, uh, you know, people are rightly concerned and curious and they ask you questions about Italy post-elections and what that will mean. On the other hand, the financial markets don't seem to be worried. I mean, when you look at the spread of Italian BTPs to Bunds, we are at an all-time low, uh, and this is kind of surprising. The stock market is one of the best stock markets in Europe of the last six or nine months. Um, so there is this strange disconnect. But I, I think, you know, the risk that, that we run is, is, is no majority, is, is a difficult uh, geography of, uh, you know, the political, the split of the political votes, and therefore the difficulty of having a, an effective acting stable government. And when you look at what's going on in other countries in Europe, uh, that's important. And not having it is a liability. And I think it's, it's particularly risky for a country like Italy, which has a bunch of structural issues to, to tackle. And I think we would, you know, we would badly need that.